Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here, and today I'm privileged to be here with Talitha Cummins. Privileged. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you going? Yeah, I'm really well, thank you. Thank you for welcoming us into your beautiful home. My absolute pleasure. I'm sorry about all the kid stuff, but that you've is okay. got it out of frame, I understand. You so. are, you're really showing that a woman can do it all. She can do a career <laughs> and family, and yeah. it's, it's great to see. But the cameras don't need to see it. Um, <laughs> now, I did see you speak at the Business Chicks 9 to Thrive Summit. Oh, right. Yes. I that. Oh, absolutely. I was there all day and I, you just amazed me. I was like listening to every single word. Oh. I was like, I need to get this woman on the show. That's very so, kind thank of you. you. Thank no. you. With a big crowd like that, do you ever get nervous? Like, Because oh, I was like, this absolutely. thing is nearly sold out. <laughs> I have spent my life fighting nerves. You know, when I was, really? I was the girl at school who um, if I had an oral coming up or, or you know had to speak in front of the class I would be nervous lose sleep for days beforehand I'd get this red rash creeping up my neck and I'd be shaking <laughs> that was me so for me to be um, to have started a career in the media industry was really no one could really believe it I, I hated oral presentations at school as well oh, oh my goodness but I never got the red rash but, but. Yeah. It's a bit hard to hide, yes. thank goodness to make up. But yeah. <laughs> Thankfully when we got to TV days we could do the uh, the old stage makeup on the neck. So yeah. yeah. But that fear never really left me. And I don't think it ever, ever will. will. But it's something that I read this book when I was um, about 15 it was called feel the fear and do it anyway mm -hmm. and I was like it's my favorite quote <laughs> yeah <laughs> so maybe not everyone is as confident and can get through things mm -hmm. um, flawlessly you know sometimes for other people it takes a lot more but as long as you keep trying you can you know sort of improve and and, and grow on it just use it use it as like an adrenaline rush to get you yeah, through right for sure yeah that was it any quickly, different I know <laughs> Well, it's just the start, Alita. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find it was a lot different just being in front of cameras then for TV, uh, or, or was I, it still nerve-wracking? It was uh, it was nerve-wracking in a different, different way, way. <laughs> because you're thinking, okay, um, and the thoughts that go through your head before you're on air, if you're out on on the road doing a live cross, then you've you've got to be in front of the cameras set up about 10 or 15 minutes before you do that live cross, doing sound checks. Hmm. So that's a lot of Talitha thinking time, you know. And to go on, go, millions of people are watching me yeah, right now. <laughs> okay, there's 500,000 watched last night. Okay, that's all right. No, you're okay. It's good, <laughs> breathe. Okay, and now what are my words, you know? It's, it's mm. a really um, kind of complex thing to battle through, but you, you just sort of you do it you just keep trying and trying yeah. you come up with these methods in your head and and kind of keep it together and it somewhat comes out yeah, somehow you hope so just yes. practice makes perfect it right does. <laughs> that's what they say now we all remember you from being a presenter on channel 7 cool. and weekend sunrise 7 news and even a weather presenter oh yes yes back in the day <laughs> i'd love to start from the beginning though if that is okay sure. you know to really I guess get people to understand that you know it's not as easy as it looks uh -huh. and even just to try to get on TV in the first place there's a lot of hard work involved so you were born on the Gold Coast I yes. read and your biography said that you worked in many of Seven's, Seven Queensland's bureaus before actually moving on to Cairns that's right can you fill in the gaps for us though you know how many years would you have actually had work and study before you yeah. even got on TV. <laughs> sure. Um, it, yeah, it was a hard slog, I won't lie. I was on the Gold Coast and they had a, I got into uni and I did um, journalism and business and I looked around the lecture theatre and there would have been probably 200, 250 people doing journalism and I just thought, oh my God, what, what am I going to do? So I thought mm. I need to set myself apart in some way so that I can finish my my uni degree and hopefully have a collection of tapes and you know things that are printed or broadcast or whatever so I started working with a um, hot tomato it was a no hot hot FM yeah um, which was a community radio station on the Gold Coast and it was I sounded I listened to a tape recently actually and I said I like this good morning <laughs> Australian dollars under you know when you first start out um, so bit cringeworthy to listen to. Absolutely <laughs> cringeworthy. And then I sent that out all across Australia to news directors. Um, and then I did work experience with Channel 10, Channel 7, um, Channel 9. And by the end of it, Marichi Door, Channel 7, um, let one of my stories go to air, which was 
probably one of the most exciting days of my life because Aww. you do so much work and so much preparation. You mm. just it's such a competitive industry, you know. So and then after that I started to get a little bit of fill in work here and there and it kind of progressed from there. But it has been a hard slog. Yeah, they can Anyone see who, that you're you're dedicated and you yes. kept getting all the experience. Yes, yeah. yeah. And a lot of unpaid work, you know, oh, yeah. hours and hours and hours and hours of unpaid work. And a lot of travelling that people don't really yes, think of. That's right. You and don't just get to get straight on seven in, in Sydney. <laughs> no, that's right. And so after that I I was actually picked up by Wynn Television and they said we've got a job for you in Cairns. So within two weeks I had to pack up my life Move um, up there. Yeah, my boyfriend and I broke up, and I moved up to Cairns by myself. Aww. So that was the um, that was the start of my career. Didn't want to go long distance. <laughs> no, well, yeah, yeah, that's another story. But yeah. well, it all ended up not in a good way for you. In a good way. Yes, life's good. <laughs> Married to someone else and having beautiful babies. <laughs> yes, correct. And how is it being a weather reporter? Because I have real respect for those people because you're just in front of a green screen. <laughs> yes. Look, I loved it because in Brisbane. So so I got the call from Cairns one day saying, can you come and trial out for the Brisbane Weather Reporter gig? And I was amazed and flattered and I got it. And um, But I said, I still want to stay on the road reporting because I don't mm. just want to be a presenter. So they attached with it a climate reporting role. And at that time it coincided with a really severe drought in southeast Queensland. Yep. And we almost ran out of water. Um, and so I did, I would have done 500 stories on drought and dam related, climate related stories, how people were saving water, all those sorts of things. And it was just a really fascinating area that I'd never sort of looked into. You didn't into. get sick of it by the end there? No, not, not <laughs> at all. Sick of reporting this now. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it was, just, it was quite fascinating. And, you know, yeah, the green screen stuff is hard. It's kind of like, where do I place yeah, my hands? <laughs> rubbing your belly and patting your head kind of thing. It's, yeah. But you, you get used to that. It's a, there's always a nerve-wracking aspect, but it's, um, yeah, it's something that with time it slowly becomes a little easier. Well, you did well. Oh, thank you. Again, practice makes perfect for that too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I did also read that you're a casual Triple M newsreader. Is yes, that correct? I was. How did you find the difference between radio and TV? Um... Oh, I feel like I sucked a little bit at, at radio because it is so fast paced. So just to put yeah. it into perspective, with TV you've got all day to to collect your interviews and write a story. Mm. Um, with radio you are turning it around every constantly. hour constantly. And yeah. now because of social media you're updating the Twitter account, you're writing a Facebook story for the radio station. You, you know, like it's a really busy time. I, I found it really stressful. I don't think I'm stressful, but I think uh, in a way it makes you even a better journalist. Cause yes. It's like you've got to get it out quick. Yeah, definitely. And still be quality as well. It, it, exactly. Mm. And then sit in front of the mic and, and be calm and yeah. deliver it. <laughs> you know? I've like, got it all like like under just control. Been chasing your tail for an hour. So, yes. yeah, a lot of good, it's skill building. Yeah, I used to work at Today FM, so I got to see that a lot. Oh, the news being done every hour, and then also traffic being done every twenty minutes. It's yes. like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's 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 like for me, it was seven hours of anxiety. Yeah, yeah. and then get home and relax, <laughs> just chill somewhat, or yes. or stress about the next day coming up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, I have noticed, and it's not just you, as a journalist, you know, things are written about you in the media. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the whole celebritism side just still amazes me. You know, when you broke up with your former fiance, when you got married, when you had your babies, it was all written. Mm -hmm. Do you, is that hard to get used to, or you just don't even read about it now? It just, it doesn't affect me for some reason. I don't. Um, you don't go on the internet. <laughs> I don't. No, I've seen all of the stories for sure. But I, I, I guess you become desensitised to it. Mm. And you're really working in a public place, um, it's public you know, sphere. You learn to adapt and you get feedback. And, you know, initially, I won't say it was always like that. For, mm. You know, initially when I used to get um, people criticising me or, you know, 
because people write some pretty nasty things, as you'd be aware. Oh um, yes, it was. It was <laughs> I've really. <had> that too. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was hard to cope with initially, but you do become desensitised to it to the point now where I can just laugh and you know, <laughs> what, if you recognise, they think that that's what happened. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the um, when I worked on Weekend Sunrise, the soapbox where everyone can write in on the email and, and uh, it, it's like, oh, whoa, that's some scary stuff comes through that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So you learn to develop a, a thick skin and, you know, it's priorities as well. You know the people that love you and you know who your friends are and really you've just got to brush it off and, and um, live to see another day, I think. Yeah, just have a good support system yeah, around you just sure. to get you through. And there's always the comments that will, you know, strike your insecurities and, and get to you and you think, oh, God, that one hurts because it's true. <laughs> um, but um, it's just pushing through and... and just dealing with it I guess. So those hateful comments don't get you down or? No, I, no, no, no. And look I, I've been relatively lucky over the years I think touch wood. as well. Touch wood, <laughs> yes. Um, and, but the, you know there'll always be critics out there and if you put yourself out publicly then you have to ex- expect that. Mm. Um, you can't, it can't limit what you do you know because you won't life. live life. You won't live <laughs> life doing what you want to do. There'll always be critics. And, and journalism and being a presenter um, or a journo is such a um, subjective kind of thing. Yes. You, know, you might like me, but, you know, the guy next door might think I'm so annoying. Mm. Um, and that's just life. That is, it's yeah. It's just being a human. Not everyone's going to like you. No. Mm. And, 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 and it applies to all walks yeah. of life I guess as well. So when you were studying journalism and wanting to be a journalist mm. did you even even think in your mind about the whole public, uh, I public side of it? I actually wanted to be a, a criminal psychologist and work in prison so public okay, life was not going to work for yeah. me. It's not going to be a thing for me but I, I didn't I didn't actually really think about it in that way but it's, it's almost like when when you're on TV, there's a buffer between you and the audience. Mm. You know, it's not, you're not exactly seeing the audience every day. So sometimes it's hard to to really be affected by those things. Yeah, it's kind of social media that's come in now, and it's yes. just made it yeah I'm, worse. I'm, that you you can still connect with the audience, which yeah. is great, but then you get all the there's some really backlash as well. stuff. And there, and you know, there are times when I just when because I like Twitter because it's obviously a great for journalists I still like being Mm. um, updated on the news and what's happening but it's a nasty place you know and I think it's and so can um, Instagram be and Facebook and all of those things it's just um, so you've just got to recognise when it's affecting you and, and just shut it off. Well, people can hide behind a computer now. Yeah, that's right. It's like, oh, yes, I can say this hurtful stuff. Yes. She's not going to come after me. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah. they wouldn't say it to your face. Oh, I'm sure they wouldn't, hopefully. No, no, wouldn't say it right. to your face. And that's a good rule to apply. If you're thinking about writing something to someone or about someone, apply that rule. Would you say yeah. it to their Would face? Would you say it to their face? Mm. Oh, that got deep. Another <laughs> deep moment. <laughs> And as we did mention before, you are married with kids. Yes. Really would love to know. And you did, you know, chat about it a bit at the Business Chicks seminar. How do you juggle everything? Like, you're amazing. Uh, (laughs) Right um, now, this this is the business, Talitha. (laughs) I do have um, running tights on underneath. but that's We don't need to tell them that. You don't need to see that. So do I. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, It's... Well, it's it's hard. I'm I'm um, I'm fortunate now that I'm doing media consultancy, so I can kind of set the work for when from when you want to do works it works around me. Mm. But um, we don't have um, like family right close to us here in the city, so that makes it difficult. My both of my yeah. parents live in Queensland. Ooh, um, so shame. yeah, my mum comes to visit a lot, and so does my dad. But it's. It's still, it's us. Um, we spend a lot of money on childcare and babysitters. And, um, you know, Ben has a gym, so he works about 10 to 12 hours a day. Wow. Uh, and he works Saturday and Sunday mornings. So it's just. Do you, you ever know, see each other? It's just what. <laughs> you ever really. get couple time? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, he starts early in the morning, so it's good that he can be he home can have in the evenings. Every, um, every night. You know, afternoon about five. So that's mm. good. But you just do what you have to do, you know. It's, it's this rubbish about balance and, you know, that doesn't exist. Yes. Um, you, you have certain priorities 
you know, right now our priorities are getting these two little humans to a stage where they'll be slightly independent and slightly. maybe going to school. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, maybe I'll step back in and I'll do something completely different with my career. But mm. that's not the time for that now. And we're just in kind of survival mode, really. Yeah. And we acknowledge that we've got to spend a lot of money on childcare to get us through this stage. And, and that's where we're at. Because the in-laws don't live close either. Um, no, they live in, in Cronulla. Okay, but well, that's a little but more they're helpful. They're also but working and yeah, busy as they've well. They've got lives. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. So, it's just we do what we have to do. No, we mm. do. I think you're doing well. Thank you. As very I said much. before at the beginning of the interview, you really are a woman that it proves that women can do it all. Yeah, you know, yeah, career. Well, yeah. It might not be fully balanced, but <laughs> it's there. It, it. I've, I've never had balance in my life, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they chose you for the uh, the panel and business chicks. So yes, must yeah. have meant something. I've done something right. <laughs> And your second child was like due on Christmas Day. Yes. Does that mean you like mustn't have organised any Christmas celebrations? No, no, we, oh we cancelled Christmas this year, but she did end up coming um, a few days prior. So I came home, I think the day before Christmas or oh. a couple of days before Christmas. And she you just, just enjoy the new baby. Yes. And the no sleep. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the sleep deprivation. Yeah. Well, again, you're doing well, so keep it, keep it up. <laughs> Thank and, you. And it will hopefully take after you in the future. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Life. <laughs> now, you, as you mentioned before, you are working as a media consultant, mm -hmm. regularly preparing clients to speak to the media. Mm -hmm. Can you like share with us how that works and why did you want to make that change? Yeah, well, it's, it's funny. A friend of mine was actually doing it and um, he's a performance coach and he needed someone, needed a journo to come in and do the questioning mm -hmm. um, of his clients one day. And so I went in and did it with him and then... We, he asked me to do another one and then I, I kind of really enjoyed it because you see the growth within a, it's typically a four hour session with people. Um, you do a bit of theory at the start and then you have a cameraman in there and you're um, going through different scenarios like live with them on camera. So you only do like a client once? For the four hours, or are you doing like no, probably three or four checks. different scenarios. Okay. And then we sit down, watch them back, review them, give them feedback, and get them to do the next one, next one, next one. And you always see improvement from you know from the start to. It's like rewatching your uh, your yes, radio it your is. radio show reel. <laughs> horrid. Um, but so it's a real it's really satisfying to see that that growth within mm. the session. So I um, yeah we started picking up clients and um, some bigger clients which was great and then I got some of my own and yeah it's just sort of grown like that. It so you're still that working I've... with that friend? Yes yeah, yeah. Okay. so we still do things together um, oh, but then nice. I do things on my own as well so it kind of works in nicely with the speaking stuff I do and mm. um, lots of different things so it's it's good I fell into it but it's something that I really enjoy. It's a different side of the career now it and sure the speaking is. you know having to get used to getting through those nerves as you yes. mentioned before. <laughs> yeah that's right and that's what I like about um, doing that is it's building confidence in people mm. and, you know you see some people who are terrified to begin with but then by the end of it they're start, they've got you know armed with some knowledge and had a little bit of experience in front mm. of the camera and they walk out more confident and that's the, the aim of it. I think you're going to be really leaving a legacy as well. Well, I'm not sure about <laughs> no, that. But. Hopefully. It's a big word, but <laughs> hopefully it's, it's there. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> now, I have been looking forward to chatting to you about this as well because I think it will help a lot of people listening mm -hmm. and it is something you've been very open about in the past. Back in 2016, you revealed on ABC's Australian Story that you battled with alcoholism. Yes. And you are currently an ambassador for Hello Sunday Morning, mm -hmm. which I absolutely love. It's a movement towards a better drinking culture. In yes. Case people haven't heard about it before. And from doing my research on you, you know, your big wake up call was when your boss came up to you and said, you know, mm. you, you're not okay, are you? Can you like share with us a long road ahead from, you know, that and kind of keeping it a bit of a secret to yourself to actually where you are now? Because I'm sure it's it's not just straight up getting up and going, okay, I'm going to go to AA meetings. And, yes. you know. Yeah. I, I think it was, you know, when I was, a, I remember having my first drink um, in my early teens and thinking this is just the best thing that has ever happened to me. You know, the, the world really lit up. And I think... 
um, being a shy, young, insecure young girl, it gave me the confidence, confidence. to be the person mm. that I wanted to be. Um, anyway, that binge drinking continued and continued throughout my teens and in, into my 20s. And of course, the anxiety of television um, really exacerbated. Yeah. Um, where you need a drink at the end of the day. Yeah, <laughs> or two. And, and the amounts just increased and increased over the years. And uh, things would start to happen. I'd fall down in restaurants. and Wow. Um, you know, just, just things like until it got really pretty bad and I, I didn't want to leave the house but just stay at home drinking. Wow. Um, so it kind of, it's a progressive, they say, say alcoholism is a progressive illness. So mm. if you're drinking a bottle of wine every night now, it's not going to get better in a year's time. Yeah, you're just going to... You'll just be drinking more. More bottles. And then, of course, when your blood alcohol is higher, you do, you know, you're more prone to doing... Silly things. things. Yeah. Mm. So so that happened, and I thought I was doing a really good job of holding it all together and... Um, still getting on TV every still, night. Yeah, and, still making yes. it. Um, but I wasn't, you know, and there was a weekend where I didn't turn up for work on a Saturday and Sunday, and then... I came in on the Monday morning and my chief of staff sat me down and just said, you're not okay, are you? And it just all fell apart. And as soon as I realised that my work facade had sort of crumbled, mm -hmm. I... Getting affected. I knew that that's, that was the call for me to do something about it. And that being said, I'd, I'd been trying to stop drinking for a long time because I recognised... Although I was, I was in denial, I kind of there was a part of me that recognised that it was causing me a lot of trouble. Um, but I, I couldn't stop. Like I just couldn't, and I couldn't imagine my life without it. Either. Yeah, yeah. Are you still going to AA meetings now? Or? Yeah, I do occasionally drop in. I don't go. I went every day initially Back then, for yes. the first couple of years, probably. Um, and it was just such an incredible tool to, to get me sober. Um, I still have friends who I, you know, speak with regularly who, you know, we just share things mm. together. And um, I do, like, I, I, if I need to, I'm, I meditate. I have to exercise every day. That keeps me on the straight and narrow. And good. It, um, makes me feel good. And there are sometimes, you know, if I've had a really big day and the kids are noisy and driving me nuts and my husband gets home and I just say I just need to go for a walk like that's I just need to he understands yeah he mm. gets it so it's understanding what works for you um I guess and ha and what is going to help you through it and now it's seven years yeah almost seven years congrats thank you Woo. can't believe it <laughs> thank it's you it's been hard to do that with a microphone in my hand <laughs> <laughs> and there are there are absolutely times when I wish that I could you know, friends' parties and everyone's having a glass of champagne. I'd love to be able to do that, but I've recognised that I can't. You can't. Because one will lead to a hundred. Mm. And, and I wouldn't have the amazing life, my beautiful husband and kids and family and friends, um, if I was still drinking. It's just the reality of it, and it's too much to risk. Yeah, exactly, because yeah, so it would be all downhill from yeah, there. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Yeah. Oh. So that's, um, that's you know, I'm, I'm aware of that now. Yeah. So is there anything you'd say to the people watching that might be going through the same thing? They might be in yeah. denial. They um, don't know where to go from here. Because yeah. I know to a lot of people it's probably very daunting to even just go to an AA meeting oh, and terrifying. admit that you have a problem. It's terrifying. Yeah, I, the first couple I, I walked up to the door and I couldn't get out. But... Um, for, I guess for anyone who's in that place right now, I know that it's a, a really dark, difficult, awful place to be, mm. but there is life and there is good life outside of it. It's just taking that first step. Go to your doctor, talk to your doctor and, and sort of go from there. Um, because you can't imagine that happiness is possible when you're feeling like that, but it really is. It takes some work and it takes some discipline, but you can get there. Well, even if the alcohol is giving you that confidence like it gave you. Yes, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people are like, why would I want to give it up? Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, that's right. But there's always an underlying reason why you're drinking and that is the most important mm. thing that needs to be understood. You need to do do the work on whatever that is. It might be depression, it might be childhood sexual abuse, it might be you know, a, a range of different things that are driving you to drink. But unless you address that underlying issue First. you're not going mm. to get better yeah mm. so i'm sure the 
having to get through the issues first and then you'll be able to find the confidence through something else yeah. just like exercise you know yeah, that's things right. like that yeah a healthier yeah. alternative the, the the alcohol or drugs are just a they're a medication it's you looking out trying to do you know look after yourself by medicating yourself but yeah. it's not the way to it's not the way forward and it just causes more problems Mm. well i'm really glad you ended up speaking up about it you know i think you're a great role model and you know it really shows when people are sending you messages and saying oh you're the reason that i stopped drinking yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty amazing you're you're changing the world a little bit by that too i'm not sure about that (laughs) but you know if i can help anyone because why not like we're all i i and that's that's a thing now i feel more connected to people and when you're an alcoholic you isolate yourself you don't share anything about about yourself and you don't want to be around other people but now for me it's important to stay connected and and Mm. helping people brings that connection yeah as long as you you don't have that drink at the parties yes yeah Yeah. well i I don't stay for long at parties now it's just Get, so get rid of the temptation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Invite them over here. <laughs> yeah, that's right, we do, yes. Now, I did have a think the other day when I was like doing my research on you and putting the questions together and I was very excited to chat to you about all areas of your life. I was like, now, even though you've, you've, you've given up drinking, it doesn't mean that, you know, you can't be fancy, especially with a girl chat like today. Yes. So I did bring you a present. Oh, <laughs> Oh, daiquiri glasses. What have we got here? And I thought I would bring a mocktail for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so thank you very while much. While I'm doing this, <laughs> can you tell us what we can expect from you in the future? Is it true that we can expect a book I was reading? Oh, uh, yeah. They've, I've been toying with that idea for a while, but um, I, I don't know. I don't know whether I really want to share too much more. You know, I think I've got the message out there and yep. I, I don't know whether every inch of my life needs to be... Um, Was it going to be a book about your life? Or? Through? I, don't, I don't really know, to be honest. Um, or still I, a bit I, up in the air? I think I might go into something different. I'm very interested in business and, um, you know, strategic kind of business operations. And, and so yeah. I, I think I might actually do it's something a different, completely uh, different. side of the... Well, I guess entertainment industry in a way. Yeah, well... Can you call it that? I, I, just something completely different, you know. I feel like I've done everything I set out to um, within commercial television and, and that's that's that. Wow, you're really going all out on this. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's glad that we're filming today I, so they can see it. <laughs> do, I, do I have to drink this? Yes. <laughs> if you want to. And just confirming that there is no alcohol in it. Absolutely no alcohol. Okay. It is literally just raspberry cordial and right. orange juice. Okay, this is good. And what is it without a little umbrella? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it stays there. Yay! <laughs> well, thank you little very much. Little sunrise, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for bringing me a sunrise and thank you for bringing me a... Um... You are so welcome. Mine's not going to stay, but that's okay. Cheers. Cheers. Congratulations for... What, seven years sober? Seven. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> mm. It's good. You can Warm um, orange juice. That is delicious. Use it. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was cold when I left the house, I promise. Uh, use the umbrella oh, just to stir it. <laughs> thank you and very it much. It tastes really nice. <laughs> tastes nice and sweet. <laughs> very sweet. <laughs> Enjoy it. I just I wanted to bring you a little a little treat. Thank you, my love. Originally my idea was like a something called a Shirley ginger, which is like ginger beer, lime juice. Um, grenadine and um, and sparkling water, but I was like, by the time I get here, it's going to be flat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's a lot and of ingredients. Probably too. not cold either. <laughs> I mean, I could have just whipped it up here, but this was a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate the effort. No, you're welcome. Um, also, love to know because I'm sure there's a lot of people watching today that are listening to this interview because they're like, okay, I want to be a journalist, mm-hmm. so or a media consultant, or any of the amazing mm. things that you've done in your life. Mm. So what advice would you give to the people that do want to go down that path? My biggest piece of advice would be to um, do work experience while you're at uni. Get as much um, experience experience as Mm. you can, like practical experience. Knock on the doors of journos, papers, email them, hassle them. Go to, uh, you know, try to get into a, a TV station, even if it's just for a day. And, and really get in there and ask questions and try to work it out. And 
Um, and hopefully by the end of uni, you've got a bit of a collation of what you've done mm. while you're there. Um, if you're going for television, go to a regional area first. It is the best training ground that you could possibly have. Uh, there are a lot of people that come used to come into the radio station and say, I want to, I just, no, I can't leave Sydney. I just want to get a job right in the metropolitan area. And the reality you're have is to move. That, mm. that that's not going to happen. Um, I, I've never seen that happen. So um, regional area experience there and then, you know, kick off your career from there. Yeah, because if you're working for free for experience, you're really yes. showing people you're dedicated and you well, actually want right. to be a journalist. Yeah, and you can improve your skills before you actually get into the industry. Mm. You know, it will sort of hone your skills. Yeah. So I did that for a while too. Did and you? it really does show. Yes, yeah. yeah. And most of the, the um, really good journos out there have done their regional experience. Mm. So, yeah. Got to really travel, see other parts of Australia yes, as well. And then, yeah, yeah. And then go out and show them what you're made of. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Now, we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview, Talitha, but as a closing statement, and was probably the most important question, mm -hmm. knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14 year old oh self? Um, <laughs> I'm going way back now. <laughs> what would I tell my 14 year old self? back yourself mm. don't doubt yourself you know there was always this little um underlying voice in my head or it wasn't even underlying it was a strong voice in my head that said that i wasn't worth it other people were better than me and that um you know i and i really let that dictate my life for a long time mm. um and it wasn't until i started seeing psychologists and and doctors and things like that that i realized that that voice is is you know a critical voice and you don't need to listen to it because it's because it's not actually true that's a very similar advice to what i'd give my 14 year old really <laughs> yeah it's, so i used to be really shy just like you as Did well you? yes yeah it's, it's it's funny but it's it's um and and i highly recommend going to see a psychologist if you've got any problems you know mm, it's, just i just want that them. stigma is slowly um you know dissipating and there's no shame in going to see someone to, to talk about your issues. In fact, I think it's smart. Yeah, it's smart just to work to through it. Yes. Because as soon as you speak out loud, yeah. you kind of register what, you know, what's yes. going on in your mind instead That's of right. just pushing it down. And you learn tools to process for the future. So mm. it's, a, it's a clever thing. It's a positive thing to do for yourself. Well, it's not only good advice for your 14-year-old self, but all the 14-year-olds <laughs> listening as well and all the young people. <laughs> Before we go, if the listeners would like to contact you or find out what you're up to, where yes. should they go? Um, you can head to my Instagram account, which is Talitha Cummins, uh, Twitter, Talitha Cummins, and Facebook, there's, I think, Talitha Cummins TV. Oh, perfect. Yes. You're on everything. I'm on everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. My it has absolute pleasure. been a pleasure. Yeah, well, you're welcome on any time. Thank so you. in the future, if you want to chat about anything, have a nice mocktail with me. <laughs> Just give me a call and we'll get you back on the show. Thank you so much, Laura. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. And for everyone watching, make sure to yeah, go follow Talitha on social media. Check out what she's doing in case there is a book coming in the future. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.